Now the hype train on this Herrera fragrance still going strong in 2017. Now in the Privé version, it had a short-lived hype train. It is running on fumes now in 2017. Let's see what this nose thinks of it. Let's go. Hey YouTube Fragrance family, welcome to another Robes 08 Fragrance Review. Today is on the house of Carolina Herrera and the scent called CH Men Privé. Let's go. CH Men Privé hit the shelves in 2015. Bottle sizes are the standards, 1.7 ounce and 3.4 ounce bottles. The one you see here is actually the smaller one, the 1.7 ounce. Concentrations eau de toilette. Flankers, this is actually a flanker to the original hype train on YouTube. CH Men and pricing. How much would this be online? Currently it's going for around $50 to $80 American retail. Again, you could shop around and perhaps you'll find a better deal. Now looking at presentation, bottle and box, let's take a look at the box first. And as you can see here, um, you have embossed CH a logo here. It says CH Men Privé at the bottom. Um, you have the brand and uh, the size in Eau de Toilette. Uh, you have the C CH branding up top here. It is also embossed. Um, on the side here, you have some information. Um, on this side, you have none. And then on the back, you have none. And at the bottom, you got all the information you need on the box. Now let's take a look at the bottle itself. Now looking at bottle presentation, this is one of those bottles that looks good from far, but far from good once you start getting a little closer and examine it a little bit. Um, this bottle, um, this black part right here, very cheap plastic. Um, this is all plastic. Um, the juice itself actually fills up to here. So it, it is a plastic sleeve that goes on top of it, basically, of the actual glass. Um, it is a flask-like look to the bottle. You can see it has, uh, uh, let's say, a concave kind of motion here. Um, it reminds me of a hip flask, as they call them. Um, also, you got the sticker at the bottom here that says all your information. Um, you got the CH logo at the top of the cap here. Um, it, it looks good, but really this is cheap i i really don't like this the, this part of i really just would have liked this cap without this just boom on top would have been good it's got the gold atomizer and the atomizer is actually really decent with this one um so pretty good atomizer for ch men Privé. the nose behind ch men Privé is none other than christophe renault renault is the nose that i I truly respect, um, there is a lot of fragrances under Renault's resume that I absolutely adore. Um, he's known for a lot of uh, men's designer top sellers, and I'm going to name off a few, but uh, one of my favorites from Renault recently is Leather Blend from Davidoff. Um, one of my favorites on my channel, I'm sure you guys have heard, uh, especially if you follow me, um, you know that I absolutely love that fragrance. That is one of my, if not my favorite from uh, Renault. Now, he's also done, obviously, some top sellers, so I'm going to name a few. Chrome Legend. Um, this one you may have heard of, uh, a little fragrance called One Million by Paco Rabanne. Yeah, that's a Renault creation. And also their newest flanker from Paco Rabanne's One Million brand, the One Million Privé. So he's the nose behind not, not only this Privé, but the One Million Privé too. Both fragrances that are, got uh, a good little hype train on both sides. So... I could see a lot more privés being released in the designer game in 2017. Notes for CH Men Privé. Let's take a look at the note breakdown. So the opening of this fragrance, um, we got a lot of fresh notes. We got grapefruit, pomelo, which is a note that I was not uh, privy before this fragrance review. So I actually bought a couple of pomelos, cut them up, smelt them, ate them, enjoyed them. <laughs> um, this one also has sage, lavender, and cardamom. So we got some spices here too. Um, in the mid, very simple. They got this whiskey note in the mid. In the base, we got some of the primary notes in this fragrance, most notably the leather. Uh, we got some tough notes here, benzoin, tonka bean, and woody notes. So there's some depth in this fragrance. Major notes to this nose right here would have to be the leather, um, the tonka bean, the cardamom, takes a page of La Nuit to be quite honest, but I'll get to that, and the benzoin. So those are the major notes. I miss the whiskey and I'm gonna tell you guys why. Group, this is an aromatic spicy fragrance. 
how many sprays and where. So what's my application with this one? Um, this one's very uh, simple and straightforward. I like to engulf this area right here. So one on the chest, no shirt, as you know, and then I'm gonna do three on the neck. So I go a triple assault around this nasal uh, passage here. So three on the neck, how do I do that? I go one on each side right here like this, and then one in the back, I'm set. Uh, four sprays, um, at times I've uh, noticed that the three sprays on the neck gets a little much, especially if it's gonna get a little warmer. Um, then I'm gonna substitute the one on the back of the neck, keep the two, and then put two more here. One on, on each arm and I'm set. But this is my usual, uh, the one and three on the neck. Now to dissect CH Men. Now the top, the opening of CH Men was a game. Uh, it was playing a game with my nose. The top of CH Men, if you watch my first impression video on YouTube on this particular fragrance when I first got it in, um, it was such a game with grapefruit and the boozy accord in this fragrance. It really was a two-way street between these two. They were kind of fighting for uh, first attention and it, it was doing that on my first impression. It's still doing it now. Um, the grapefruit in here, let's uh, delve into a little bit more into the grapefruit. This grapefruit note is, um, how can I say, your standard grapefruit note in a designer fragrance. Don't expect the juicy, authentic grapefruit. Um, it really didn't blow my mind. It was just your standard grapefruit designer opening I was I was super excited when I saw pomelo as a note because I was like what is pomelo this is new to me it was a very it was a new note to my palette I didn't even know what it was obviously did some Google search I went to the supermarket and they had pomelos I bought three of those suckers and I wanted to see what does pomelo smell like look like what does it taste like? I really wanted to get my palette on it and I did. Now, some good news, some good news. Yes, I have a new favorite citrus to eat for breakfast. Those pomelos are super tasty, I love it. <laughs> However, the smell of pomelo is um, a light grapefruit. That's kind of like where I was getting uh, from the pomelos I purchased. And truly the scent from pomelo to grapefruit is, is, is very, very much the same. So in this fragrance, to be quite honest, really is there pomelo? No, it was just a sexy new note that they could put in their note breakdown. This smells like grapefruit through and through. I mean, it could be pomelo, but it was just standard grapefruit. So I don't know why it's there. So technically there might've been pomelo in this fragrance, but I never really discovered anything different here from other grapefruit notes that I've I've encountered over my years of sniffing designer fragrances. So the grapefruit, just standard, uh, regular grapefruit, um, it, it's okay. Um, it's nothing to jump out of my seat. Now, there's an immediate boozy undertone to this fragrance. It's an undertone. It really doesn't take over the fragrance. Uh, no, mm -mm. in the opening it does, but it really does mellow down. Um, it really is an undertone to anything, to the scent. Um, I mentioned this in my initial impression. I didn't say it was whiskey in my initial impression. I said it was a boozy undertone, and that's really what I got. In the overall idea of this scent, I would not classify this as a boozy scent. So anybody that's saying, oh, there's whiskey in here, this is gonna be a boozy scent. No, no, it's far from it. It really isn't, it's more of a leather-based scent than anything else, to be quite honest. I mean, it really isn't a boozy scent. The idea of whiskey here is interesting. However, it's more of an idea and less about being a bang on whiskey note. More about giving the user the idea of a boozy tinge to the fragrance. It's spiced up front and the spices make you kind of almost think like a spiced rum more than anything than more of a whiskey. Again, I'm not a heavy drinker, so I'm not going to let you guys know, but I, I can detect what kind of booziness that we're going to be getting here. And this really is a uh, synthetic accord to kind of make you think that there's booze in here. The booziness in this fragrance takes the scent and vacates the scent as quick as it showed itself. It was very short-lived and mostly an undertone to the fragrance, not as prominent as a lot of reviews have stated. Um, I really didn't feel like the booziness is a huge factor in this fragrance. Um, there's so many other notes that would be more appropriate to classify this as, and I don't think boozy is one of them. One of those prominent notes that really isn't talked about at CH Men is the cardamom. The cardamom has 
huge factor in CH Men Preve, especially in this opening, giving this scent this warmth that you come to expect from a heavy cardamom scent. Think of La Nuit de l'Homme. Yeah, kind of pulls a page out of La Nuit and kind of gives you that same kind of warmth. Uh, which it also also shares lavender. It uses lavender the same way La Nuit de l'Homme uses lavender, um, which is a secondary note in this opening into more into the deep mid of this fragrance. And it would not surprise me at all if someone that absolutely loved La Nuit de l'Homme would love this fragrance. It would not surprise me at all because they are very much close cousins. They're very much the use of cardamom and lavender in both fragrances is uncanny. Really actually well done. Obviously, La Nuit is a top seller. This is this sold very well when it first started. Um, so there's a reason there. Sweetness. Let's talk about sweetness because it, it is a part of CH Men Privé. The sweetness pushes through. It is very sweet throughout, which kind of takes a page out of the original CH Men. Not the same kind of sweetness. The sweetness in both of these fragrances, very different. The, sweet, the sweetness in the CH Men was more of a burnt sugar feel. It was actually very, very interesting, but very sugary. It really was very, very sweet. This sweetness is more smoother, less in your face, um, really a standard kind of sweetness uh, to the fragrance. Now on to the major players in this fragrance. Once you get more into the dry down of CH Men Privé, your major players are the Tonka Bean and the Leather Note. Those are your big boys in this fragrance. Both of these notes back the scent from start to finish. The Leather gets more prominent within more wearings. It is an excellent leather. It's not showing anything new to the, design, the designer game as a leather note. It doesn't give you any real smokiness or animalic facets that a lot of niche like uh, leathers kind of give you. But um, as far as a designer, it is a fairly solid leather set. Pretty much the leather is the star of the show in this fragrance. Tonka's part of this uh, fragrance is very solid, but nothing that truly sets it apart. You get some mild woods backing the scent, which plays a depth role in this fragrance. <laughs> Overall, the brand of Herrera was never an upper tier fragrance house, in my personal opinion. I thought they were more of a third tier fragrance house in our designer game. So Privé is a shot at the more of the upper tier fragrance houses or second tier fragrance houses like Jean-Paul Gaultier, Armani, um, you know, Paco Rabanne. These brands are releasing fragrances like One Million Privé, Ultramal, Le Mal Essence, Armani Code Profumo. Those fragrances, personally for me, I feel um, have the edge over Privé. These fragrances all utilize the same kind of DNA, right? We got that sweet Tonka note that is being saturated in the men's fragrance game. Same thing with cardamom-based fragrances in the men's fragrance game. Cardamom and Tonka are huge right now. Also, Tonka, leathery, cardamom-based scents like this one um, really doesn't show anything in particular that really gets me to gravitate towards this fragrance. And that is the one thing that is going to hurt the score of CH Men Privé. Is it a bad fragrance per se? No, no. Um, it is just this new breed of designer releases. There's so many to choose from. Is Armani Code Profumo better than this? Personally for me, yeah. One Million Privé, yeah. Ultra Mal, yeah. Le Mal Essence, yeah. Um, are they that much better than this? You know, two, three, four score ahead of this one? No, it's not three, four, but they are ahead in a lot of different categories in regards as a full review. So among all those recent releases from second tier or first tier fragrance houses um, in the popular Tonka cardamom leathery based uh, scents, um, I would have to say that those fragrances beat this one out. However, the fragrance game, it's pick your poison. If you like that kind of scent and you like CH, you know, you like CH men and you love this, there's nothing wrong with that. 
Um, you pick your own poison. I'm just one to tell you what I personally think of all these recent releases. <laughs> now let's take a look at the stats. Recommended age, oh, teenagers. Oh, this has your name written all over it. Teenagers are gonna go like this and they're gonna start drinking this crap. <laughs> Teenagers right up to your mid-twenties, um, I could see that age group love CH Men Prevate. Now, everyone can wear this one, from teenagers right up to grandpa can wear it. It all depends on your personal taste, obviously, but I could see teenagers to mid-twenties really eating this fragrance right up. They would love this. Reminds me of what? What kind of fragrance does this remind me of, man? The cardamom, the use of cardamom, and... Lavender was so uncanny to La Nuit de l'Homme, it's not even funny. Um, it really utilized that really well. Bulgari Man in black also. Um, so there's a lot of these fragrances that are coming out um, recently. They're using the same t DNA. The best time to wear it would have to be on a date, nighttime. Um, for the teenagers out there, you could almost get away with this fragrance as a signature scent. So you could wear it during the day, night parties, going to the movies, going to the mall, things like that. You can wear this as your signature scent. Um, there's no problem with that. Seasons, mostly fall. This this is going to work very, very well in the fall. Um, when the start of spring comes in, the start of it, it's still cool out. I would like that. Spring nights, very, very good. Summer nights too, same thing. And also winter. So really, it, it is as a versatile scent, we'll say, kind of. Work appropriate? No, no. Um, however, I had some success with it wearing it to work. Um, so again, it doesn't really put, it, it pushes, but it doesn't push that much. Um, it's not overly sweet. It is sweet, but it's not one of those that you wear it and you go boom as a projection bomb and you're just sweetening up the whole freaking pixie sticks for everybody. Um, no, it's not like that. So um, yes, that's why for teenagers, you can wear it to school. Signature scent worthy? No. But I could see a teenager rocking this. That goes to you guys. You guys can almost wear this as a signature. Rating system, let's go. Let's take a look at my rating system. Projection, this is a seven bottles out of 10. It is a moderate to skin fragrance. It really didn't push that much. It pushes, but not that much. Um, I was actually surprised. A lot of these fragrances, like the One Million Privé and the Code Profumo, um, actually push. Um, this one pushes, but it really does die down quite quickly. That goes to longevity. Longevity, seven bottles out of 10. Also, it is a seven to nine hour. It hits my V um, barely, but it does. So very, very well. Good score there at a seven. The couple of factors, eight, eight bottles out of 10. Um, no surprise here. I thought this was gonna garner compliments and it did. A uniqueness, this is where it's gonna hurt this fragrance. Three bottles out of 10. There's nothing in CH Men Privé that screams something different to me. It really never had its shining moment that I said, oh, this note or this accord in this fragrance really jumps out and says, wow, this is something different or something really nice in CH Men Privé. It really never showed me that. So three bottles out of 10, that goes to pricing versus what you get. So what you're getting in this bottle, as far as what you're paying for, six bottles out of 10, it is a solid scent for what you pay for. And it's a little cheaper than, let's say, Code Profumo, which is basically what it's going against right now. But I think that extra $10, $15 that you're spending on Profumo is actually uh, well worth it in regards to comparing these two. That goes to versatility, seven bottles out of 10. It actually is pretty versatile. It doesn't push too much um, that you can actually wear. You know, it's not overly sweet. It has some sweetness aspects to it, but really is uh, help. It helps out its versatility quite a bit there. Smell. Seven bottles out of 10, it just smells like a seven out of 10 kind of fragrance. It really doesn't do much, but it's very, very, very solid at a seven. And that goes to an overall score, CH Men Privé, seven. Um, it really is just a seven type of fragrance. Herrera is not one of these brands that I absolutely love. Um, they haven't really showed me much in the fragrance game. And this one is a step towards getting better fragrances in the men's game, hopefully. Um, this is a step in the right direction. I liked it, but I didn't love it. And that goes to buy, try, or pass. 
This is just basically this kind of branding, this kind of fragrance is really up to you, the user. If you like these kind of fragrances, it's pick your poison. This has to be a try. It's not bad enough to be a pass and it's not good enough to be a buy. It's solid. I don't think it's better than the original CH Men. I still think that this one tops it all. It's only better in one aspect than this guy right here, and that is blend. The blend in this is much better than this one. Everything worked really well together instead of a couple notes jumping in and out, which this one did. I actually would have loved an EDP concentration instead of an eau de toilette uh, for the Privé edition, and a more prominent boozy accord, which would have elevated the scent quite a bit. I think if you would have worked on that boozy accord in the opening, to the mid, um, I think this could have went up a couple notches in the score and that makes a huge difference. That one accord kind of was the game breaker for this one and it really broke the game for me. It really wasn't something that I was jumping out and saying, it's amazing, it's not. It was just solid. Thank you for watching, comment below, let us know what you guys think about CH Men Privé and as always, have a good one. <laughs> this fragrance review is sponsored by fragranceby.ca. To all my Canadian subscribers, if you are interested in CH Men Privé, you can get it at fragranceby.ca. You can utilize my code ROBES08 to get free shipping on anything $50 or more. Um, I believe CH Men Privé is around $55, the one I've purchased right here. So it would apply that code. Thanks.